know that the city normally for the sort of pro Russian history. Okay. So in the same thing, I mean, I think it's uh, it's demonstrated the agricultural land. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Talking about natural resources in Norway, the natural resources belong to the country, they don't belong to you know, private companies. And that's where we're going wrong, we provide the most to people, and then we can use their own natural gas to ship up to England. Okay, so there's a principle in Norway that, that the resources belong to the people, and the people benefit from this. Anything else? And uh, Norway are not with the European Union. So you are suggesting that maybe it's got something to do with the European Union? Uh, no, but it could be an option. Okay. It could be an option to leave the European Union. Okay. And then make up, make up the own, our own rules. Okay. Yeah. I, I just agree with that. Um, not, not to put it into the EU or no EU space, but I think the responsibility for Irish natural resources has come down, has come down to decisions that have been made in this country. The, the there's, there's, there's pressure from international corporations, obviously, and they, they bend governments and foreign communities like yourself, but I don't think it's something that needs to fall into being skeptical about Europe. Or, uh, okay. um, I will personally think that there is a need for more public debate on natural resources issue. Because um, as a foreigner who has been living in this country now for about four years, I find it quite surprising the level of low interest in discussions of these um, natural resources. Because um, look at the history of the likes of Shell and Chevron, the major oil multinationals in the world where they have been working for years. Nigeria, my home country, is a very good example of it. Shell started to exploit oil in Nigeria in 1958. And ever since then, all the pipes that they laid then have never for once been replaced or rerun through another route. So what you see in most places is that these exposed pipes that have been exposed for like five decades have started to rust. And sometimes when they do bust and there is loud explosion, people get killed, communities get burned. It is the local community that will be blamed for it. They are blamed for siphoning and taking all these things and causing the damages. But the real fact still comes down to the fact that the government, I, I find it very, very uh, unimaginable that they find it hard to protect their people, but they would rather do everything they can to protect the multinationals. Mm -hmm. One of the offshore uh, rig of Chevron in Nigeria in December, sometimes in December, exploded. It was officially reported that seven people died on that rig. Alternative sources claim there were more than 30 people that died that day. But the fire has been burning on that offshore rig since December till today as I'm speaking. They are yet to find a solution to stopping the fire. They are yet to find a solution to protecting the ecosystem of that offshore region. But yet, despite all these things that are going on in other parts of the world, in the likes of Brazil, off the coast of America itself about a year or two ago, it's still so shocking, the kind of apathy that people still put towards this issue of natural resources. Sometimes this week I was listening to a debate on the TV about this issue of fracking. The company that is being given, that is likely to be given the contract here in Ireland has never done fracking job in any country in the world before. They are coming into Ireland to do it for the first time. But the director, the CEO of this company was claiming and saying that the people who are working for their newly formed company are people with lifetime experience in fracking. Despite all the statistics that were put to him about the problems that could arise from it, there wasn't any concrete evidence or any concrete point to talk about the kind of protection that will be put in place if any disaster should happen, <coughs> if there should be any error, either human error or mechanical error, if anything should happen, how will the people be protected? Nothing like that. but. It's all about the money, the benefit that stands to be gained by the government. <coughs> but it will be very, very nice, then it will be very, very good if the government is going to be able to get enough money so that they will be able to offset the loans and the billions they have taken from Troika and the likes of the EU um, banks. Maybe if they are able to get enough money, pay all those loans away, then 
the benefit to the people then will be obvious. So you agree with you?